Four years have passed since design work was started on the Arrow at the Avro Aircraft Plant near Toronto. During this time, a tightly scheduled program of design, tooling, and test has been accomplished. By the summer of 1957, the first arrow is taking final shape on the assembly line. By September, all the major components have been assembled and most of the major systems installed. On October the 4th, the first arrow is publicly unveiled by Canada's Minister of National Defense. This is the first time that the public is able to see what Avro's big new supersonic interceptor really looks like. By December, installation of hardware and many of the tests on the aircraft systems are completed to the point where engine runs can be started. The engines are run with and without afterburners and further systems checks are carried out. The taxi trials, started on Christmas Eve, give test pilot Jan Zurakowski an opportunity to become familiar with the handling of the aircraft on the ground. They also permit further checks of the damping system, the brakes, the hydraulics, and many operating tests of the parabrake. At this time, there are still many problems that have to be solved and quite a few taxi trials that have to be successfully completed before we can think too much about the attempt on the first flight. Finally, on the morning of Tuesday, March 25th, the arrow is ready for flight. The two chase aircraft which have been assigned to keep tabs on the in-flight performance of the arrow a CF-100 piloted by Spud Pataki and a Sabre piloted by Flight Lieutenant Jack Woodman take off to assume their positions over the airfield.
detection. Okay. I am calling in to take photographs. Stand by it. Controls are behaving quite nice, nicely. I can see no oscillatory motions of any description in them. I think all this uh, immediate and the carriage is that the whole derivation disappears. I think and the carriage is making this. That's right, it's the side door which is making. The door which comes and closes the undercarriage in the wing. It's hitting against the fuselage. Roger. 201 from Frank, we confirm this. Up to 250. Thank you. coming out of the mirror, but otherwise I can see there is no problem. Uh, all up down now. And uh, quite strong vibration straight away. Yes, this is the same door hitting against the fuselage, yeah. But it seems to be pretty, pretty uh, solid there, though. I think it's still got a bit less, one and a half degree. Your, sorry, side slip to right. That is Roger Jan, as far as I can see from the back, no condition has changed. There was no change. The, the, the radar has all the time a tendency to go to neutral and then about two degrees power. Uh, switching out the dampers now. Your innings, please, to one. Is 40 to 50 degrees, 10 to 15 variable. Thank you. Now look on to the arrow 201 uh, over here, there 4,000 feet. And any instruction on 32, please. No, 201, Toronto Tower, runway 32, 32, the wind is northeast at 10, the altimeter is 020, and you're number one for 32. Touchdown. Wonderful parachute, I'm fine. Beautiful scout. 